what's up guys? I got a very special video for you today. We're gonna be harnessing the power of 3D software to transform ourselves from fleshy meat bags into cute and custom little puppet buddies all puppetable with a VR controller. Now this is an effect that my stream producer slash Discord moderator Sotomonte came up with, and he's gonna be here any second to guide us through the process. Where was I? But he is not here yet, so we're gonna go <laughs> This is my tutorial now. <laughs> This is an intermediate to advanced tutorial, which means I won't be showing every single button press or click. So feel free to take the ideas shown in this video and apply them to programs like Unreal Engine, Maya, or Cinema 4D. With that being said, you guys probably can't wait to turn your mortal bodies into puppets, so let's jump into it. We will start with the design in 2D, and once we have figured it out, we'll make it in 3D. This way, we know that the design works without having to invest as much time. Let's start with the big shapes first, and then go into the details. Since I'm turning Clint into a puppet, let's take a look at the defining features, starting with his head. Don't only think about your head shape in real life, also take into account your personality. Clint has a squarish face shape, and he's a strong climber in his human form, so he gives me square vibes. So his head will be this shape. Let's also give him some glasses and a torso with arms. We will give him some red eyes, as he's a vampire now. <laughs> But you can choose black eyes for a more classic Muppet look, or go fancy and choose to give it some more realistic eyes with irises. I personally think that simple eyes give a nicer effect, but feel free to prove me wrong. The mouth is pretty important in a puppet, because it's the thing that moves the most, so I recommend having a large mouth. <laughs> Let's also have in mind that the design has to work in motion when animated. We want to have as much movement in a puppet as possible to make it feel alive, but we can only use one hand to control it. Puppeteers usually tackle this problem by adding elements that kind of move by themselves, like feathers in Animal from the Muppets, or the ears in Rolf the Dog. This is called secondary motion. In Clint's case, I'll make the arms, body, and glasses have secondary motion. We will see the technical side of how to add secondary motion to these parts in the rigging section, but it's something to keep in mind when designing the puppet as well. Now that we have the design, let's model the puppet! I'm going to start with the head, having the 2D design as a reference plane here in Blender. I'll create a cube and apply a subdivision modifier, then add loop cuts where needed to shape it, making sure to get it as close as possible to the drawing from the front and side views. I sculpted some shapes to make the hair. Once I'm happy with the silhouettes, I'll merge them and keep sculpting, until I have a single shape that I'm happy with. I'll follow the same process I used for the head to create the nose, ears, eyes and glasses. Sometimes it's useful to model only one half of an object and then add a mirror modifier with clipping on. This can not only save time, but also make it more comfortable to select and move things around. And finally for the body, just create the main shape and then duplicate and modify it to make the clothes to your liking. A lot of puppet makers skip making the legs as they're rarely seen, so feel free to do that too if you want. And now we have a completed Clint puppet model, which means it's time to make our materials. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just using a principal BSDF shader with some fabric textures for the clothes. I'm also using a principal BSDF shader for the foam parts, with some noise going to the color and normal to give it some variety. And of course, don't forget to add some hair particles to make it all fuzzy and fluffy and nice. Just enable advanced and add a little bit of brownian and a little bit of damp. Bada bing! You should have an awesome looking puppet right now. Let me see. Hmm? Oh yeah, cool! Now it's time to rig this thing so that we can puppeteer it. This section is going to be the most technical, but don't be scared, it's not as hard as it seems and it's very interesting. Alright, let's think about this together. When you rig a character, the root bone, this is the bone where the other bones come from, is located in the center of gravity, around the hip area. However, we actually want the root bone to be here at the head, so the movement will trickle down to the rest of the body from there. We can extrude the spine and the arms from it. I'll also add a couple of bones for the glasses, because I want them to wiggle. Secondary motion, remember? Now, parent the geometry to the rig with automatic weights, and weight paint as needed to correct some parts. It's very helpful to have auto-normalized toggle on. That way, when you add weights to one bone, Blender will automatically take that weight away from the other bones, ensuring that the total weights add up to 100%. Very handy. To have the tight clothes match the body weights, you can create a data transfer modifier. Select the body, Check vertex data and vertex groups, then apply it. Now the weights should match the bodies very closely. To rig the mouth, I decided to use a shape key for the mouth opening, instead of a bone for the jaw, as it lets me control the shape of the mouth a bit better. 
For physics, I will be using an add-on called Wiggle 2. After installing it, just select some bones in post mode and in the animation panel, enable it for the scene. Then select Bone Tail. Now when we press play in our timeline, the bones have physics! Feel free to play with the settings on each bone to get different results. By this point, we have a great looking puppet with a rig and ragdoll physics, so let's go ahead and make a cool shot where the puppet is talking and moving. First, we need some dialogue to puppeteer to, so let's record the sound. Want to turn yourself into a 3D puppet this week? Well, join us for the weekly challenge on my Discord server. Wonderful! Now it's time to get some movement, my favorite part. Now, we can animate the head by hand and get a pretty cool puppet animation only having to keyframe the head and mouth. But if you have a VR headset that can connect to your computer, I have something better for you. We're going to motion capture a hand and puppeteer in real time. I will be using a program called Mocap Fusion VR. You can find it on Steam for free or linked in the description below. Once inside Fusion VR, we can open the menu and click Record. The puppeteering itself couldn't be easier. Just move your hand as if you were puppeteering a real puppet and use your index finger to push on the trigger to open and close the mouth. The harder you press, the more it will close. I recommend having the audio we recorded playing on loop and just do a couple versions like that. Once we're done, press the A or B button again and the recording will stop. Let's export the scene by clicking the Export tab. It's a bit hard to find, but here it is. Then give it a name and click on Scene. Lastly, let's click on the Open Folder button and hop back into the computer. Here, open the folder with the name of your VR scene and open the Blender file called Scene Loader. Once inside, click this Play icon to run the script and the skeleton should appear with your animation. Make sure to scale the keyframes so that it's real time in your frame rate, in my case 30 FPS, and copy paste your rig into your working scene. Now that we have the rig and the motion capture skeleton, we will connect our puppet rig to the capture one. I like to use a child of constraint in the head bone, instead of directly parenting it, just because it's a little easier to enable and disable it. We'll parent the head bone to the right hand bone in the VR rig. And BAM! When we hit play, the puppet is moving! To connect the mouth to our trigger press, I'll add a driver to the open and clothing shape key. In the driver editor, I'll select the first bone in the index and look at its local rotation on the x-axis. This will change based on how we pushed the trigger in the motion capture process. So if we set up the points in the graph correctly, we can have it talk as we puppeteered. Awesome! At this point we have a puppet that moves in a really fun and believable way. Congrats! The hard part is over! Now we can relax and make it look pretty. With lights and rendering and compositing! For lighting, I will be using an HDRI and adding some lights where I see fit to add a bit of spice to it. Since we have all of this fuzz on the puppet, it really helps to have a backlight, so that the fuzz catches the light and we get a nice rim lighting. Enable motion blur, turn on depth of field, make it transparent, and let's hit render! Want to turn yourself into a 3D puppet this week? Well, join us for the weekly challenge on my Discord server. Win virtual badges and climb the ranks by participating, unlock the secret patron channel by winning, and get your art shown in the next Punisher video. So what are you guys waiting for? Click that link and let's get creating. But hey, for real though, Huge shout outs to you Sotomonte for joining us today and walking us through this super cool, unique effect. Of course, yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me. I, I really enjoyed it and thanks for having you know my video here. Absolutely, man. Yeah, my pleasure. Do you have a place where people can check out more of your art though? You can find me on Instagram at, at Sotomonte underscore. So we're like vampires forever now, right? Yeah, for all eternity. And isn't sunlight like super bad for us then? <gasps> ouch, 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 ouch. <laughs>